way into working with the homeless pretty accidentally. Uh, I was in my senior year of college thinking that I'd like to do some type of service work before going on to graduate school. And really, because it was the thing that I came upon first, I ended up volunteering for a year at a shelter for runaway kids. And it was uh, at a time really before homelessness as kind of a modern phenomenon really exploded. And so it became clear within really a few weeks that this was not what anyone would conventionally think of as kind of a runaway problem. Uh, I was working with uh, the boys under 16 uh, as kind of an assistant case manager. And the, the reality of almost all of these young men's lives was that there was no family to reunite them with. And so it was this dawning awareness that year of just all this goodwill mustered, uh, you know, a very uh, attractive shelter, and yet these young people would leave, come back, leave, come back, and it became pretty clear that we weren't really dealing with runaways, we were dealing with homeless kids, and that we had a tool that wasn't actually at all well matched to the problem. I just kept asking my colleagues, why aren't we finding these kids apartments? And the answer would be some form of, well, we're a shelter. Uh, that's not what we do. And that was really the beginning of my work in this field of thinking, whatever else is going on in the life of someone who has lots of needs, if he or she or that family isn't in a stable living situation, nothing else is going to stick. And so that kind of early realization and conviction that um, housing and stable housing was a precondition for about everything else that we need to be healthy in our lives uh, really came about through being in an environment where the, the tools were mismatched to the problem. I'd never thought to that moment, where does housing come from? Who builds it? Who pays for it? Uh, you know, why doesn't it you know, seem to reach some people who need it? And so the, uh, the, the, my introduction to actually understanding the dynamics of the housing market and learning how to be a housing developer and um, uh, actually begin to, to create concrete solutions for families and young people and others who are um, homeless was um, finding a job at a not-for-profit group in Brooklyn, a terrific small unit within Brooklyn Catholic Charities that was uh, in a position of having an awful lot of real estate that the group had access to, a lot of vacant church-owned properties, schools, convents, orphanages, not huge financial resources, but uh, really incredible property resources. So for seven years, I had this incredible education of learning by doing in about 20 different neighborhoods in Brooklyn and Queens, and it's like, pastor of the parish would call, he's got a church uh, that uh, is, is uh, struggling financially, he's got an empty school building, is there anything we can do with it, and then trying to figure out and bring a whole group of people together typically from city agencies to neighborhood groups to uh, looking at what the physical possibilities of the site would be, and just really learning from the ground up how to put together solutions that involve expanding housing opportunities but also working with communities to try through that process to knit them together a little more closely.